To be effective at Bible telling, there are several principles you should understand. In the book, The Art of Storytelling, the section about Bible telling, I talk about the Bible telling triangle. That's a simple triangle where we have the storyteller, we have the listener, and the story. In the book, I, I deal with that in detail, talking about each, the, each different aspect. But for this film clip, I just simply want you to notice there's a relationship, there's a line drawn between the Bible teller and the story. The Bible teller gets to choose the story. They said, I will tell that story. There's also a line drawn, a relationship between the storyteller and the listener. You get to choose who you're going to tell the story to. So, I get to choose the story, and I get to choose the listener. The point is this. As you look at the triangle, there's a relationship between the story and the listener that doesn't involve the storyteller. Uh, we like to think we affect w what goes on there, but we don't. And this is true of other, of other methods as well. Pastor gets up and preaches a sermon about stewardship, about tithing, about giving. After the sermon is over, Someone walks up and says, oh, Pastor, that was a great sermon. I, 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 I was moved to, to commit my life to Christ. I want to receive him. The pastor doesn't say, no, wait a minute. No, 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 you don't understand. That's not the point of my sermon. You need to give more. I have another sermon for accepting Christ. No, no, no. We, we all know that the Spirit of God takes the sermon and uses it any way he wants to. In the area of Bible telling, we're a little bit more aware of that. We call it the power of the story. That, that we can choose the story and we can choose the listener. But the effect that that story has upon the listener is up to the Spirit of God. Another principle is what we call the pool of true stories. How how these stories affect people. Uh, we call that slow, permanent change. It goes like this. In our lives, we have all different kinds of stories. Our life is full of stories. We have parent, parents have told us stories. We call them family stories. We have history stories. We have stories we learned in school. We have stories that uh, nothing more than gossip, talk about friends. Uh, we have stories about everyday life, what we did yesterday or the day before, or a ball game that we went to, all kinds of stories in our lives. But we have a special pool, a special reservoir of what I call true stories, or at least we think they're true. And, and in this pool of true stories. We have Bible stories, we have history stories, we have family stories. The, 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 our parents have said to us, now, John, this story here is true, except this is a true story. So we put that into our reservoir, our pool of true stories. Teachers have told us, this is a, this is a history story, and it's true. Now, that pool of true stories affects every decision that we make in our life. We based all of our decisions upon what we know is true. You could call this our world view. You might be raised in a gang, uh, and the gang will tell you what's true, and you accept those as true, and you make all your decisions in life based upon those true stories. It doesn't matter. Now, when we come to a Bible story, we come to a person, we say, I want to give you this Bible story. And we want you to basically, what we're saying is, put that into your pool of true stories. Now, they may not 
they may say, well, I don't know. I think this goes into fairy tales. But it could be that they'll go ahead and put it into their pool of true stories. Now, how does that affect our life? Well, if this is where they're at, and we want them to be over here, we want them to make this decision, we put that one story in, and it hardly affects their life at all. And not only does it hardly affect their life, but all their other true stories uh, affect that one story. It corrupts it. Now, if we get all bent out of shape, no, 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 you, you can't do it. Now, all those other stories, those aren't true. That's the only one you have that's true. No, no, no. No, no, they know those others are true. They're still in doubt about yours. So we just let them corrupt the story. We have time. It's slow. But then we give them another one, and they put it in, and another one, and another one. And they're starting to enjoy this. Oh, we like, oh, these are, these are, these are, these are great stories. But then something happens. As they put more and more stories in, it starts to swamp their pool of true stories. There's too many. So what they do is they reach in for one of their old stories, and they pull it out and says, based upon new information, this story isn't true. And they throw it out. And as we give them more stories and more stories, they, they, they pull another one out and throw it away. And we're changing their stories. On top of that, with all these new stories, and they're rehearsing the, the ones we've told them before, they suddenly clean up those first stories that we, that we told them. So, they, so they're, they're cleaning up. So it's constantly, and what's happening now is, is their decision skills are starting to move. And as we give them more and more stories, and they throw the old ones out, finally... They're, the pool of true stories, they are now making a decision over here. We call that slow, permanent change. It's slow because it's one story at a time that they put in there. They're not, they're not just listening to the stories, they're learning the stories and they're putting them in there and they're part of their life. And it's Permanent because we've taken the time to totally change over their pool of true stories. So if someone else comes along and says, uh, uh, we want you to make a decision over here, well, what do they have to do? They have to totally change their pool of true stories. Keep these principles in mind as we continue on talking about Bible telling. 